got your Bibles, let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, I'm going to begin at verse 4. And being assembled together with them, they commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked to him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Jerusalem? He saith unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Verse 9, And when, he, and when the, he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And the cloud received him out of their sight. These are the last recorded words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I uphold them 100%. I do not believe there was anything else said after that, but I want to say why I'm telling you this. There is a legend, and I believe it's just a Jewish legend, that something did happen, but I, still, I really don't believe it. I think it's just a legend, a myth, a, whatever you want to call it, but still makes a very good point. They say, this is just a legend, I don't really believe it. Ah. Uh, they said after Jesus started to ascend up to heaven. <clears throat> I don't know why it sounds believable, because they said as he was starting to go, this tradition, they say that Peter reached up and tried to hold Jesus back by grabbing his feet. Doesn't that sound like something Peter would do? I mean, just study impetuous Peter. That sounds exactly like something he would try, but once again, I don't believe it. However, there's a reason I'm telling this. He said he kept saying to Jesus, Look, I failed you once. What if I fail you again? Peter was trying to hold him back. But the angels of heaven and the energy of God was pulling him out of Peter's reach. Once again, more, Peter asks, says, What if I fail you, Lord? Jesus says, If you fail me, I have no other plan. Once again, the last words was, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But why are you telling this? Because of what they said, what the legend says. If you fail me, I have no other plan. Tonight, I'm preaching on no other plan. There is no other plan but what is in this book right here, the Holy Bible, the inspired Word of God found in the King James Version. <clears throat> I'll tell you tonight, if you want to know what God's plan is, <clears throat> you can just go write this book right here. And I want to deal with some things that there's no other plans for. First and foremost, there is no other plan but salvation through Jesus Christ. The Bible says, John chapter 3, verse 16. Start with this one first. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Really, that in itself would be enough for an honest person. That verse right there. He only had one only begotten son, and his name was Jesus. No other name. But it goes on. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no other name given among men. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. I'll tell you what, there is only one, one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. I'll tell you something, 
it's sad where even in the church world, there are people who are now starting to say, I'm talking about the so-called evangelical Christians. I heard this around 2008. I've heard different uh, figures. But they asked several evangelical Christians. I think there was more than one question, but the main question has been brought out. Are there other ways to heaven besides Jesus? And while I have heard different figures, everything from 59% to 68% saying, yes, there's other ways. Regardless, it doesn't matter if it was 99.9% .9 of the Christians said there's other ways. The Bible is plain. There is only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. No other name is given among men whereby we must be saved. And let me say this. If they'd ask a question to 10,000 professed Christians, that very Christians, and only one Christian amongst that 10,000 said yes to that question that there was other ways to be saved, that is way too many. May I go one step further? If they polled 100 million professed Christians, ask that question, is there any other way to be saved through, than through Jesus Christ? And they said, and only one of that 100 million said, yes, there's other ways. That's still one too many, especially in the light of the fact that this book right here I'm preaching from is the absolute final authority. And it says there's only one way. No other name, not Buddhist, not Hin, not, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Krishna. Only one way. That's through Jesus Christ. Years ago, back during the first election of Barack Obama, Dr. Jeremiah Wright, who was, the alleged, who was supposed to have been the pastor of uh, Barack Obama back then, and by the way, it may, his name may be right, but his last name should be wrong. I remember hearing this interview. They interviewed him on radio. And they said, they asked him the question, something like this. I forget exactly how it was asked, but it went something like, the Bible says concerning Jesus. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Then they asked, what about the Muslims who don't know Jesus? Dr. Wright answered, Jesus said in John 10, 16, and other sheep I have which are not this fold, them I must also bring. That is heresy. That's twisting that verse to clear out of its context. Actually, if you read all of John chapter 10, you'll know there's only one way to be saved. And that's through Jesus. Read it. Read it. Read the whole thing. It's very plain. You know what the other sheep were? It's not dealing with, with uh, the Muslims. If a Muslim gets saved and gets out of Mohammedism, yes, he's of the fold. He has to repent of Mohammedism. Even be willing to give up his life. But can I tell you something tonight? There's only one way. The sheep. He's dealing with it, me and you who are Gentiles. You know, Jesus went to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many as believed on his name. That's what he's dealing with, the Gentiles. Amen. A few years ago, the February 1st, 2013 issue of the Sword of the Lord, there's an article called The Thumbnail, C.S. Lewis, Troubling Theology by Stan Camp. I just want to give you this, this quote of C.S. Lewis on salvation. If you know anything else, please pardon me. I'm just going by what I have. Beyond the perimeters of traditional um, Armenianism, however, <clears throat> Lewis expected that some non-Christians would be saved. And most troubling when he said, through all salvation, that all salvation is through Jesus, we not need conclude that he cannot save those who have not explicitly accepted him in, life, in this life. I'm sorry to say it. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. 
no other name. No other name given. I don't care who it is. C.S. Lewis. I don't care who else. They say Joel Osteen even said that there's other ways. I don't care the name of the preacher. There's only one way to be saved. That's through Jesus. Reasons why? For Jesus is just as much God as the Father. John chapter 1, 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, with, was God, and the Word was with God. And the same was in the beginning with God, the Word being Jesus Christ. Jesus had just as much a part of creation as the Father and the Holy Ghost. All, John 1, 3 says, All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Just as 1, 1 says, In the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth. John of Genesis 1 26, and God said, Let's, let's, plural, make man in our own image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, <clears throat> and over the cattle, and all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. And let me tell you something. Jesus always was. Well, I mean, he was just there in the beginning, just like the Father. He's always been God, always will be. There's never a time he didn't exist. But he came into the world born of a virgin to die for our sins. The Bible says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign, saying, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in Matthew chapter 8, 1, verse 18 through 20, it deals with the birth of Christ. You realize Joseph, when he found out his wife Mary was expecting child, let's see, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When it, as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Verse 19, then Joseph her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was mine to put away her away privately. Verse 20, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, and saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done that might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be a child, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted God with us. And the other important thing to consider, he was born of a virgin. He was a supernaturally born child. Amen. He was... God became coming a man. Jesus died and rose again. For the Bible says, God commends love towards us, and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 9, 10, That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believe unto salvation. With a mouth confession is made unto salvations. <clears throat> I don't like these churches that have Jesus on the cross. For he's no longer there. He's no longer in the tomb. He's now at the right hand of God the Father. Prophecies point to him. Being, being born in Bethlehem. Micah 5, 2. Compare with Matthew 2, 1. Born of a virgin, Isaiah 7, 14. Compare with Matthew 1, 18 to 23. Tribe of Judah, Genesis 49, 10. Compare with Hebrews 7, 14. Family of Jesse, David, Isaiah 11, 1. Reve compare it with Revelation 22, verse 16. Would be in Egypt, Hosea 11, 1. Matthew 2, 11 through, compare that with Matthew 11, through 15, I could go on and on. There's several. He was betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 11:12. 12. Compare that with Matthew 26, 
14 through 20, 16. I wish I could read them all, but, you know, I really wouldn't have time. But tonight, I believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. If you're trusting any other name, you are not, you are not saved. I'll tell you what I believe. If you're trusting Jesus and Muhammad, you're not saved. It's Jesus and Him only that saves. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. <clears throat> God's Word is no other plan. There's no other plan but the Bible. Amen. The Bible says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Second Peter 1, 19-21, we have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, and no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This book, the Holy Bible, is God's holy word. I don't want to preach too long, but I'm going to say something. The Bible contains, the Bible contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are unchangeable. Read to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, <clears throat> the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclose. Christ is its grand subject. Our good, its design, the glory of God's end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, a river of pleasure. It is given you in life. will be opened into judgment and will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility towards our greatest labor and condemns all who trifle with its contents from a track. I'll tell you tonight, it shows the remedy of sin. <clears throat> it shows us what sin is. For whosoever commits transgression also commits sin, transgressive also law. For sin is a transgression law. First John 3, 4. It shows us the remedy for sin, which is Jesus but God commends love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. It shows us how to avoid going back to sin once we are saved. Psalm 119, 9 through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Let me not wander from thy commandments. Pardon me. <coughs> thy word have I hid my heart. I might not sin against thee. God's holy. The Bible's holy. It shows men how to be holy. And one more thing. God is true. God is truth. And he cannot lie. Let me just tell you. Deuteronomy 32, 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God, truth, without iniquity, just and right is he. Deuteronomy 32, 4. Romans 3, 12 says, God forbid... Yea, let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Because God's true, his word is true. Amen. The Bible says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. We can count on all its teachings. 
as true and accurate. Because you know what? Because God is true and accurate. When God says he created this world, we can count on Genesis 1 through 3, and we can reject evolution. 1 Timothy 6.20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. Evolution is not even science. I'm telling you that. When God calls something a sin, mark it down as a sin. We're in a day and age where people are debating the homosexual issue. Get in the Bible. You'll find out it is an absolute abomination. Leviticus 18.22 says, Amen. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind it is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. It's so sinful. Jesus, God actually had it written down twice. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I'll tell you what, tonight, when the Bible's clear on the subject, we need to accept it because, see, God cannot lie. Numbers 3, 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither is son of a man that he should repent. Have he not said, shall he not do? Have he spoken, shall he not make it good? Titus 1, 2 says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Hebrews 6, 18 that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Impossible! We might have a strong consolation who have fled for a refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. It's impossible for God to lie. It is impossible. He cannot lie. He's not a man to lie. When he says, sanctify them through thy truth, that's Jesus praying his prayer before he went to the went to the cross sanctify him through thy truth thy word is truth john 17 17 tonight there is no other plan but the bible and there's no other plan but evangelism mark chapter 16 begin at verse 15 go ye into all the world preach the gospel to every creature he who believes is baptized shall be saved he that believes not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with tongues. They shall take up serpents if they drink any day thing. It shall not hurt them. Tonight, there is only one plan. That's personal evangelism. Acts 1.8 says, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and unto the utmost parts of the earth. We're to get out of our four walls and get into the highways and the hedges and to compel them to come in. Tonight, we need to reach souls. That's why we've got the Holy Ghost. Acts 3.18, When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked, from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will not acquire thine hand. I don't want bloody hands. The reason we got the Holy Ghost is because we need to be effective witnesses. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses. We need to be a witness of the Lord. Get the message out. Makes that shy person bold and that bold person can even restrain them so they won't make a fool of themselves. I'll tell you what, you don't have to be a smart person because often some people are not all that smart. Can confound the very well-educated, the wise as it's called. Can give you supernatural wisdom. It can bring back verses you long forgot, the Holy Ghost. 
John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you tonight. The Holy Ghost is given so you can be a witness. He can even give you power to cast out devils. Acts chapter 16, 16 to 18. It came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High, which show unto us the way of salvation. This did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. I'll tell you tonight, that's why we need to seek God for the Holy Ghost and be baptized. Because I'll tell you what, I mean the baptism of the Holy Ghost, because we're to be effective witnesses. Yes, we need to know the Word. But we need the Holy Ghost too. Tonight, there is no other plan. The salvation through Jesus Christ. The Bible is the Word of God. And personal evangelism is the plan of action. I'm going to say something. I'm ready to close. Tonight, maybe you're not doing what you can. Hey, we all could do better reaching souls, can't we? We all could get deeper in the Word. I can. We all could pray more. We all could have more of the Holy Ghost. We all need to proclaim Jesus and not compromise. Tonight, there's only one plan. That's the elevation through Jesus Christ. Today, if you don't know Jesus, please turn to him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door. I will come in and sup with him, and he with me. John 1, 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power. Come the sons of God, even as many as that believed all his name. Only one plan for salvation. That's through Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. If you don't know Him today, why not repent of your sin and by faith receive Him? God bless you.